Seeing into the future live. This is Rackspace's continuing coverage of TechCrunch Disrupt 2013. Now here's Robert Scoble. Hey, I'm Robert Scoble, and we're at the uh, Rackspace uh, uh, studio at TechCrunch Disrupt 2013. We're mostly meeting with uh, people who are building the future of wearable computers, mostly on Google Glass. Uh, and we have another one for you right now, which is a really interesting 3D game built for Google Glass. We're going to talk about the future of gaming right now. So who are you? I'm Sean McCracken. Look at me. Look at me. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I'm Sean McCracken, and I'm a CEO of Imaginary Computer. And uh, I'm, I'm out of Albuquerque, New Mexico. And I've been a game developer for like the last five years, um, focusing on Android and iOS games. Uh, I do mainly native side um, and stuff like that. Yeah. So we, we should probably uh, uh, turn off our glass because it's bothering me. <laughs> but uh, why don't we just show you a game and then talk about the future of gaming with this kind of wearable platform? Sure, sure. So um, my game uh, is Cyclops. And why it's named that is kind of apropos due to the one eye piece of the glass. And so what I've done is I've sideloaded um, an APK so it's actually not using the mirror API. But as I look around, the camera follows exactly what I see. Yeah. This is really choppy because it's screen, screen casting off of it. But the frame rate's actually about 30 frames per second. So right now the game's over, but I can still look around through and the whole city. And essentially the game is about um, aliens are invading and you have to def kind of just defend the city. Can you, can you restart it? Yeah, or? let me uh, look at the play button. There. So, if you saw, I just looked at the play button and it started. Yep. So now there are aliens above me and I have to shoot them. There's one. There's a bunch of aliens. I have to attack them. Come now, are on. we seeing the aliens on the screen? See, they're really dark right now oh, because okay. they're far away. Got it. So the the pink lights are the um, the lasers that they're shooting at you, and it's kind of like. Oh, there's one. Yep. I see them now. So they're kind of like it's more like a Nintendo Wii game at this point. Yeah. And uh, kind of a casual. You only have 60 seconds. And if you notice, I'm just like looking at them and then they explode. So, and four, three, two, one, and the game's over. So you have 60 seconds and it's like shoot as many aliens as you can in 60 seconds. Yeah. And it was just kind of a proof of concept really that um, I, I literally coded in, in eight hours, uh, four of those on a plane coming back from New York. So, um, but yeah. What caught my eye about you is, you, you, you know, Google, Google Glass is the first consumer electronics device that knows where I'm aimed and where I'm looking. We, we don't yet have access to the uh, APIs for those two sensors, right? You had to sideload and go in at the bottom at, at an Android level and, and really hack your way into these sensors, right? Yeah, yeah. It's, right now it's very hacky. Um, but I think it was XC7 that they allowed us to start sideloading. Yeah. Um, so that was when I just, I, I actually got my glass a week after XC7. So it was perfect timing for we me. We should explain XC is the version number yeah, of, it's a, of the software running. Here. Right, it's Explorer, Edi Explorer Edition 7. So because it's built on, I believe, Ice Cream Sandwich with the 4.0. 4.0.4 4. yeah. and then the XE is built on top of that for the glass layer and it's been hard um, to really get full access like the mirror API is just terribly underpowered at this point yeah. and it's just a push notification. So for people who don't know what we're talking about mirror mm -hmm. API is a API that sits on top of the of, of Android and this glass layer. Right and it's pretty much the the 
the way in for developers at this point. Like if you're going to develop, you're either going to go through the Mirror API, which is kind of HTML-ish with a server backend, and then, or just doing native Android, and then side loading. And side loading, what we mean by side loading too is that we can't even really load it from the glass. It's not officially supported. So you have to, I have to have my, my lap, laptop connect it and then like push it through ADB, which is a developer tool as well. So it's very difficult for just normal, you know, everyday consumers to even play my game. Like only a couple hundred people have played it um, out of the, the whole um, community yet. Yeah, there's probably what, 4,000 of these walking around. Yeah. And yeah. there's not a lot of apps getting the apps is hard because there's not really a good app store yet. Well, there's no app store and also it's it's literally forbidden for us to make money off of yeah. any glassware yet. So that's supposed to be coming, but it's, it's get, it, I love glass and I'm still going to develop for it, but they really need to help us help them. Yeah. <laughs> and open up the tools a bit more and like... I, I assume that it, this is gonna get launched by next May, because if it doesn't come out by the Google I.O. conference next year, everybody's gonna be yelling and screaming at, at Google, and, and I think there's gonna be a stock price hit if they don't ship it by then. So I would assume that between now and May, we're gonna see a dramatically better set of developer tools, we're gonna to see a store open up. We're gonna oh see, yeah, yeah, it's, you know. it's still, it's so early on. It's early days and yeah. you know, they're trying their best to, because the Google, you know, Explorer program, I think it's actually more non-developers than it is developers, which was surprising to me as a developer, yeah. but that's fine, you know, because it, I have a leg up kind of, so, yeah. and I just, hit the ground running. I've only had my glass for a month now and I've already made three different apps for it. So I was ready. <laughs> yeah. Well you knew how to build Android apps before, right? Yeah. So you yeah. knew you, you know how to code Java then I guess? Um well I do Java, I do um well Objective C for iOS, but um this game was actually made in a platform called Unity 3D, which is um they it's kind of a platform for mobile games and AAA games and stuff and that's what I've been building in for a long time. And it runs fairly well on the glass? Which is yes, yes, which was surprising to me um, because I didn't know how powerful I had, you know, there's, nobody really knows the chipset that it's, it's well, being it's used. it's a TI chipset. Right, yeah. but it's still, you know, almost borderline obsolete at this point. Yeah. So, um, but I was you know, I've also been making games for a while, and I've been making games since Android started, so this is kind of going back to old, like, eclair sort of um, stuff that I had to do to, like, make the polygon count very, very low and make it, you know, more about the gameplay and less about the graphics. Yep. So, um, which is something that Google doesn't, they want me to polish it up a little bit more. And like, I spent eight hours on it. I'm not gonna, I would love to spend more time on it, but right now it's just not financially, yep. you know, I, I have a lot of investors that are talking to me, but they're like, how are you gonna monetize? I'm like, yep. I don't know. So uh, Google needs to answer those questions before developers like you really get excited it, and ex build well, companies around Exactly, them. exactly. And I think that, you know, what I'm doing is, I'm not just focusing on glass, I'm, I'm I'm focusing on wearables, yeah. and that's like I've been talking to Epson and their Movieros and stuff. And I think, you know, this is the future. Definitely, we might be too early. We might be about five years early, but that's a great place to be. Maybe I three. Th maybe three. Yeah. Um, it depends because I think version two is going to start hitting stride with this. Yeah. I think first of all, they need to they need to give us just the basic APIs that let us talk to the sensors yeah. just to see the eye sensor and how it works and see the head motion sensor right. and make that available to the mirror API. Yeah. It just seems like really uh, that needs to be done before this really has any shot at getting a developer community. Exactly. Right? And the GDK, they, their GDK has been very... The, explain which is, what the GDK is. That's the glass developer kit, okay. which is the Android side, like less of the mirror API. Um, it's more of just like doing native glass coding 
It's through. almost like the uh, mirror API is aimed at a developer just a little bit more skilled than I am. Uh, right? Pretty so, much. So it's a, it, well, I would I would say it's more for the web devs, yeah. and then the um, the GDK is more for the mobile devs. Yeah. And uh, I've this is running on the GDK at its like infancy. I don't think that they've really done too much to the GDK since they've released it. Um, well, not publicly at least, yeah. but I, I know that they're working on it. It's just a matter of time. And yeah. the sooner the better for people like me. <laughs> so let's talk about wearables because uh, this month Nike's going to have a shirt with sensors and yep. shoes and yep. a new and uh, fuel, fuel band. band. Right, and right. Apple's working on a watch and Google's working on a whole platform of wearables and glasses are going to be the only thing. Right. Where do you think this is going to go and what kind of game do you think it's going to let you build in a couple of years that's different than a game for a tablet or for a laptop? Right, right. And that, that's, that's the million dollar question. But really, like I see more already from this, there's a, been a big fitness app craze like and future fitness gaming as well. Like kind of because I think in America, we we all know that like especially us kind of in the tech i i don't i don't work out you know at all so if we gamify working out maybe that'll help us a little bit and then i think that 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 sphere will grow immensely like especially with the nike stuff where you'll start to become really competitive with your friends like you can run the same you know route and then you can be chased by zombies or you can be you know, chased by robots and yeah. all sorts of crazy stuff. And then with the shirt with sensors, that would give us more range of motion. So then there would be more virtual reality sort of stuff where you're actually, you know, you have a sword and you're able to control it. Like I see lightsaber sort of simulations, yeah. but yeah, stuff like that will be really fun. And it's, you know, taking, I think the Wii, the Nintendo Wii kind of created that whole different paradigm with the, you know, the sensor stuff. And I've been trying to take that further because I think that that's really the market that you have to really target is the casual gamer. Because I don't think a lot of the, like, glass explorers are going to be heavy gamers. So they have to be kind of short games you know, something that's like more, or a party game, you know, or something that's just crazy competitive. Yeah. So. This, this doesn't yet have the low energy Bluetooth in it, does it? No, yeah. not that I know, I'm I, I'm thinking it doesn't. I'm not sure about I'm sure that. that by the time it ships, it should, because that's a huge use case for walking up to things that have little low energy Bluetooth beacons on them. Oh yeah, on. yeah, and there's also um, Qualcomm, is working on a lot of stuff. They have this this system that's called All Join. It's a it's basically a developer kit for doing stuff like that, where it's a multi-user peer-to-peer networks that can just like form just on the fly, yeah. and that's the future right there too. Like you could be playing a game and just be walking down the street, and you could be attacked by five different people just because you were in a different neighborhood. <laughs> it's, it's pretty interesting. Like, uh, it's going to be fun to see what you guys do with it yeah. and where Google takes this. Cause, and where Apple, you know, there's going to be competitors to the yeah. wearable on the face yeah. kind of thing, particularly if Google Glass takes off. And that's a big if, but I think it will. I, based on the reactions, I get to it on the street and stuff like that. Oh, definitely. There's like, I call it the glass effect. For like, the only reason why I'm here talking to you is because of my glass. Like, it was the best 1500 bucks I've ever spent. Um, but I've already been, I've been in the AR augmented reality sphere for like three years. So this was like a no brainer for me. It's just like, because the camera, you know, this never really made sense where you're looking through it. This makes sense. But they still have to get the, like we were saying before, the one to one, uh, you know, for the camera because the angle is too wide and stuff. But I think that that will be coming. Yeah. Very cool, where do we uh, follow you? Um, I'm on Twitter, Seantron, S-E-A-N-T-R-O-N, yeah. and uh, on G+, Sean McCracken. Very cool. Cool. Well, thanks for coming from New, York, New Mexico to see yeah. us. Thank you so I'm much for having me.
So we're going to be doing more of these uh, futuristic uh, videos, talking about the future of wearables and the personal cloud all day long. So come on back in another uh, 15, 20 minutes, and we'll have another interview up. Thank you very much. Seeing into the future live. Rackspace's continuous coverage of TechCrunch Disrupt 2013 will continue in a moment. Fast and reliable streaming with cloud files. Find out more at rackspace.com.